Alright, so this is how I would add fills to text or to images in Cricut Design Space. And it's technically called a hatch fill pattern to where when you're drawing, it's not just drawing an outline, but it is actually going to be drawing um, inside of our words or our images. This is what it's going to look like when we get it done. If you would like a faster approach to this and a more straightforward approach, then you can watch my Inkscape tutorial on hatch fill patterns, which is done outside of Cricut Design Space, but this is all done in Cricut Design Space with the help of some of my templates that I am providing for free. So if you don't want to use Inkscape, which is a free program, um, and you just want to stay within Cricut Design Space, this is the tutorial for you. All right, so I have a fresh canvas here, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in an image that I want to use. I'm gonna be using the one you just saw on my screen a moment ago, and I've already imported it via the upload image button. This is just an SVG file I designed personally through Inkscape. Uh, I am giving it away for free along with my hatch fill patterns. I will link all of that information below this video so that you can access them on my blog. If you would like to learn more about um, designing your own SVG files and typographies and images, converting images, you can check out my course free the SVG, which I will link more information about below as well. Alright, so we also need to bring in the hatch fills. So I've already uploaded those via the upload button. Again, these are free for you. I will link them below. It might take a second for them to bring in because hatch fills have a lot of lines to them, so just be patient. I would encourage you to close out any extra apps and tabs that are on your computer to speed up the interface. All right, so you can see here with the two options, I have a line option and then I have a cross hatch option. I'm going to be featuring the line option, but you could definitely try the cross hatch as well. It's really just up to your preference. I'm gonna ungroup these and I'm gonna delete the one I'm not using so it doesn't slow down my interface. Okay, next we need to ungroup this file here that we wanna add the fill to. So I'm gonna ungroup it. And if there's anything that you plan to keep the same color, then you can just weld those together so you only have to slice once. For example, the word never and glue gun is gonna be the same color. So I'm gonna just click on each one of those by holding my shift key and I'm gonna weld those together. That way I only have to slice them once and not separately from each other. All right, and I think I'm also going to make the two pinks go together. I'm just gonna make them one a pink color like that. And I'm also gonna weld those together. So I'm gonna select the word woman and then the glue and weld that. That way I only have to slice that option once. All right, so before we go any further, I want you to select this entire um, text piece or image, whatever you're working with, and I want you to duplicate it. And I just want you to group it together using the group tool on the top and just hide it in your layers panel, okay? Don't, you don't need to do anything else with it, just hide it over there, you want an extra copy and I'll show you why in a few minutes. The next step here is going to be to bring one of these pieces over. We'll just start with this one. I'm gonna enlarge my hatch a little bit here, my hatch fill. And then you wanna make sure you duplicate this hatch before you slice so that you have an additional copy because you're gonna need it more than once. So I just duplicated that and I just hit it using that little eyeball tool in my layers panel so that I can come back to it when I need it in a minute. With the hatch and one of your layers selected, you want to select those two and then click on the slice tool at the bottom. It's gonna slice the hatch out from the words. And it might look kind of funky, it's fine if it does, that happens. We don't need this piece, so we can just click it off and delete it. And then we'll pick the best result. So these two results don't look very good, I'm gonna get rid of them, but this result does look really good. So we have that one done, I'm just gonna move it down here out of my way. And then I'm gonna repeat the process two more times. I'm gonna bring this one over, and that copy, that duplicate we made of that hatch fill, I'm going to unhide it now, and I'm gonna slice it out. And again, make sure you make another duplicate of it so that you have it for the last piece that we need to slice. Clicking and dragging and slicing that out. Okay. 
and it looks really funky on this one, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that. We just need to click the X button. And then we're gonna pull this apart and select the best one, which is this one right here. These ones look really strange and we don't wanna use them, but we wanna use this one. Okay, I'm gonna pull that one down there. And then one last time with this, and I actually need to weld this together. There's two pieces there. So I'm gonna click and drag and weld that. Now it's one piece and then we're gonna unhide that last hatch fill and we're gonna slice that out selecting both of those clicking the slice tool and get rid of all the unwanted pieces and then we need to put it back together now that duplicate copy that we made and then hid over here in the layers panel, I want you to go ahead and unhide it. And go ahead and just pull it. My screen's all crazy here. I'm gonna pull all these over here out of our way. All right, so there we go. We have our du original duplicate. We have our hatch pieces over here, which we're gonna add in here in a minute. What we wanna do at this point in time is we want to click and drag over our original piece, and we wanna go up to the operation and change it to pen. This is what it would look like if we were not using the hatch fills, obviously, just a basic outline. So we wanna do that for one primary reason. We want a nice finished outline edge and then the hatch fill filling, basically. So we're gonna combine these two together. So before you go any further with your hatch pieces over here, which mine are just all jumbled, I'm just gonna click and drag over those and I'm gonna change that operation to pen lines. That way my hatch fill, my filled pieces, and my original outline, they're all pen lines now. They're all operation pen and draw lines. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this apart because I need to align each of these together. So I'm gonna bring this one down here and match each piece with its, its corresponding piece. So selecting these two pieces that match, going up to that align tool and clicking center so that it centers them. Then you wanna use that attach tool so that they stay together. So I'm clicking that attach tool and now I can move that around and it's not gonna go anywhere on me there. It's gonna stay exactly as I want it. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Click and drag over the outline piece and the, um, the hatch fill piece. And it looks like this one here needs to be welded because I forgot to do that step. So let me weld that. Here we go. Now I'm gonna click and drag over those two and align tool at the top and center. Again, clicking that attach tool so it stays together. And our last one over here, clicking and dragging, al or, sorry, align and then center and then that attach tool. All right, the last thing, the next thing we wanna do is change the color. So what color do you want this to be? I just pick a representation color. It doesn't have to actually be what you put in your machine, but these are just the colors I'm going to represent. Mint and a blue, and let's make this pink. All right, I'm just gonna choose this bubblegum color here. And then we just wanna pull these pieces back over and just place them back exactly the where they should be. And to do this, you just wanna kinda of get in close here. It should be pretty easy to tell if you're using this file because there's little lines that overlap and it's pretty obvious to tell when it's aligned and when it's not aligned. So I'm just gonna put this back where it belongs. All right, so I'm happy with that. I've put it back together now. And we'll want to attach all of this together so that it stays exactly as we see it on our screen right now. Because if we were trying to go to our cut screen right now, it would move all these pieces. So we want to keep it exactly as it is right here. Now, if you wanna add like a little square behind it or something like that so that it actually cuts around this when done, you could do that as well. So I would grab maybe uh, my shapes tool here and a square. And then I would go ahead and click that unlock icon so I could stretch this. And let's change this to white. And using that arrange tool, send it to the back. And then I could click and drag over both of these 
and I could try centering, see if that works. Yep, there we go. So now that center, it looks a little off to me when I actually center it that way, so I'm gonna just adjust it slightly so that it looks more natural to my eye. Alright, there we go. And then if I want the drawing to stay on the square here, you need to use that attach tool one more time so that it stays exactly where it's supposed to. Alright, so our file is completely set up here, and now all we have to do is send this to our cut screen, select our, if we're using paper, I am using paper, or if you're using something else, paper is probably what you'll want to use, cardstock or paper. You'll want to select that material, and then we'll go ahead and put our pen in our machine and let this write. Here my computer is telling me to put in the blueberry pen. You want to make sure you push it until the arrow disappears just like that, wiggle it to make sure it doesn't come out. I've got some white cardstock here, so I'm just gonna load that. And then I'm press that flash and go button. This is my Maker 3, but you can do this with any of the Cricut machines. They all write, including the Cricut Joy. So it's gonna take a little bit of time because again, your machine is drawing all those little lines, it's filling things in for you, so it will take a little bit of time. Um, I recommend just having some other craft that you've cut out that you're maybe working on while your machine is doing this. And just keep an eye on it. You shouldn't have any major problems with it. I've never had, um, you know, the pen stop working. As long as you know that your pen is, is not gonna run out of ink, then you should be good to go. Okay, so the first pen is done, and now I just gotta pop that out and pop the next one in. Um, so it's asking me for my mint color now. So I'm just gonna pop this in, make sure that arrow disappears, and then close the clamp and continue with your cut. So here is our final result with all of those colors done and everything colored in. Now if you were to make the hatch pattern smaller, it would fill it in even more. I didn't mind there being a little bit of white showing through with the hatch going back and forth. Um, but you can make it a little bit tighter as well, especially if you use that cross hatch option. Make sure you download these hatch fill patterns on my blog. All of that is linked below for you. And if you want to learn more about designing an Inkscape for yourself or making your own SVG files, make sure you visit my link below this video as well. I have a full free workshop on converting an image into an SVG and an entire master course that can help you as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.